Hey, it's me, Nalthazar. Welcome to another episode of Achieving Perfection. This is going to be for the Dragon War and the Arcades node for the legacy version of the event. So per the usual, I'm going to show off the decks that I would suggest for newer players, and then I'm going to show the deck that I would suggest for people with larger collections. I'm going to go over the node itself, and then deck building for people who don't have either of the decks. So the deck for newer players is a Nissa World Waker deck. And I would use something like this. And then for players with larger collections, I would go with Tamiyo. So this is where we're going to throw Tamiyo into this event. And I would use something like this. All right, let's get into the node itself. So the node itself is banned. That means that we can use white, blue, and green planeswalkers. Our objectives are going to be to win the fight, summon three or more creatures during a single turn, and cast three creatures with toughness five or more. Now that cast three, you can actually cast more than three. It should say cast three or more. Um, and then for the ambush objective, that's summon, so tokens count. So token producing planeswalkers are great for this. The permanent support is very relevant on this node. The, it makes it so that your first ability is going to draw you a card and give it three mana, which is very nice. The second ability, slightly less relevant. Your creatures gain flying and vigilance until the beginning of your next turn. And then this third ability one, you really want to be careful of. So it makes it so that your creatures get plus X plus zero, and that's permanent, where X is equal to their toughness. So make sure that you don't use your third ability until you know that you're going to have completed all of your objectives and you're ready to win the match right? So that's the node. Let's get into the decks themselves. So my deck for newer players is a Nissa World Waker deck. You can also get away with using some other token producer, but I feel like Nissa World Waker is the best for this node for newer players. And so the rares are all Origins rares, and the Dragon's Horde is an event card. So for our rares, we're looking at Dwinin. This is going to be a creature that's going to go ahead and block incoming damage. It's going to keep you alive. It's going to buff your creatures, and it's going to give you some health back. Sky Snare Spider is just a simple block and kill things. And then Grand Warlord Rada, if you have this card, is fantastic. It, it has the five toughness. It's got haste, and it's going to give you a bunch of mana, which is very useful. Now, for supports, we're looking at mana gain, right? So we've got Dragon's Horde, which is going to convert to green and help you draw cards. Nissa's Pilgrimage, which is going to convert to green. And Gingerbread Cabin, which is going to convert to green and then give you food tokens, which will help you gain life. Furthermore, we're going to go ahead and throw Sunset Pyramid in here because it helps you draw cards. But if you have another card in green that helps you draw, definitely use that. So Nissa's Revelation is better, but that's a mythic, so I didn't throw it in. For removal... We're looking at Death Sprout because it's going to kill creatures and it's going to get you some of your lands. We've got Nissa's Defeat because it's going to help you destroy supports and it's going to draw you cards. And then Status because, well, it's great for blocking and killing, but also for flipping and destroying. So that is the beginner deck in a nutshell. It's pretty basic. Get your three creatures out. Make sure you use your first or if you want, use your third just to win. But either your first or your third are going to completely beat the summon objective. Now, if you have more at your disposal, this is where I'd go ahead and throw Tamiyo into this event. And I know you're probably getting tired of seeing all the green conversion, but if you're running a legacy event, you're really just going to see Omniscience or green conversion until they limit the sets that we're allowed to use. So naturally, we're running Barl because Barl has that five toughness. And we're running Avenger of Zendikar because it's going to create tokens and it's going to buff all the creatures to make it so that you kill more quickly. Deploy the Gatewatch is going to immediately satisfy the summon objective. So then you just want to make sure that you also complete the cast objective. And that's part of why Court of Calling is in here. Because Deploy is going to thin out your deck of creatures, but Court of Calling is going to fetch them. You only need to actually cast three of them. So it's, it's not a particularly difficult thing to do. Apart from the four gem converters, we've got Blue Sun Zenith to draw cards, just get into our combo a little bit more quickly, and then River's Rebuke to serve as removal. Because your opponent is probably going to be playing tokens, they might have some kind of support like Thopter Spy or something that makes perpetual tokens. You want to get rid of that and you want to get rid of the tokens. So having a world wipe is really nice. 
This is the deck that I'm planning on using, but let's say that you can't make this deck, and let's say that you can't make the Nissa World Waker deck. What should you do? All right, so this time, instead of going to your cards first, go to your Planeswalkers first, and go ahead and try and find Planeswalkers that produce tokens. So Elspeth's Sun's Champion, Elspeth's. Elspeth's Sun's Champion is a great choice. First ability is going to complete the summon objective. If you bought yourself Garuk Cursed Huntsman, this is amazing for this node. That third ability just ends things entirely. Gideon of the Trials, that first ability, along with the Gideon that summons the Hoplites, but I wouldn't use that one because he's garbage, but that will work for you. I wouldn't go ahead and use Kiora, even though the fourth ability will make all of the tokens. Um, you can go ahead and use Nissa World Waker, as I showed. This one is great. You could even go ahead and use Sahili. Sahili is going to make tokens, or the Dovin Ban, not Dovin Ban, the Dovin that makes tokens. So those would be my suggestions for Planeswalkers. Now, once you've done that, you're going to go to cards, and then you're going to want to go ahead and just look through your creatures and try and find whatever creatures you have that have a toughness of five or more. Try and get three that you can build around. So within the colors of what you chose. So if you chose white, for example, go ahead and try and find creatures that have five or more toughness that you can build around. So I would start with uncommons if your collection is smaller, start with rares if it's a little bit better, start with mythics and masterpieces if you've got most of everything, right? So go off of what you have and first fill out the creatures. Then once you've filled out the creatures, go ahead and make sure that you put in your removal you're going to want to make sure that you have removal for everything, and you especially want to make sure that you have board wipe. Because there's going to be a lot of token production, try and include something that gets rid of everything. Bounce spells will be particularly effective here, but you're going to go ahead, type in, not to story, destroy, and see what you have that just wipes the field. If you have the Great Aurora, you definitely want to throw this in your deck if you don't have some kind of combo to instantly win. Or you can also go with something like Casualties of War is going to help a lot. It's going to get rid of those pesky supports. Acroma's Vengeance is going to do a lot for you. Unfortunately, most of these are going to be in the Mythic to Masterpiece section. So that is something that's kind of sad. But just make sure that you've got something that's going to help with that. Now, my other suggestion is if, you're wind if you wind up running a blue deck and you aren't personally running tokens then go ahead and throw in the ley line here because this is a node in which you're going to run into a bunch of token decks. And so go ahead and throw in ley line of singularity and that's going to get rid of a lot of threats that you just aren't going to have to deal with. If you are using tokens, don't put this down before you make your tokens. You don't want to make sure that you lose that summon objective. So the node is pretty straightforward. Don't accelerate too quickly without completing your objectives. You want to make sure that you complete the objectives and then win. I like to go ahead, get to my third ability, pop it, and just immediately win. So I hope this helps you. I hope you get perfect, and I hope to see you in the next one.